So now in this video, we're going to be building a simple knot gate demonstration circuit using the 2N2222 NPN bipolar junction transistor right here. So to begin with, we have the LED there and turn the power on. You can see that the LED is lit up right now. So this is going to be our load, our output. We consider this high right now currents flowing from positive to negative. So, in any case, before we insert the transistor, it might be easier to insert the switch. So, you can see here, we have a gray jumper there, and up here, we have the point where the LED and the resistor connect. So, that's a node. What we're going to do, we are going to put the switch, the power's kind of coming loose in this power supply. We're going to put the switch in between so that top that top pin there in between where the LED is and that gray jumper down there. And so it's not connected to anything right now. Now we're going to take the NPN bipolar junction transistor. So we're looking at the flat side. You may be able to see the part number there. 2N and then right below it 2222A so it's a slightly enhanced version of the 2N2222 but uh, that doesn't really matter it will function the same either way so in any case whether it's an A version or not so we take it and the left pin is the emitter middle pin is the base and the right pin is the collector we want the collector up where the anode the long lead of the LED is because that goes to the positive side short lead cathodes up one more that goes to the negative side so we want the collector where the anode is the base comes to where the switch is we'll look at why coming up and the emitter goes to the negative rail so the way that an NPN bipolar junction transistor works the collector is more positive than the emitter we have that it can get to the same voltage too to uh, zero volts but uh, it will have a more positive voltage on the collector at all times or worst case scenario zero volts and then the base here we need the base to be more positive than the emitter by 0.7 volts or more and then the transistor will start conducting from collector to emitter and we're going to get it to collect good enough to where it saturates so these switches their top two pins are always connected to each other bottom two pins are always connected to each other when you close the switch then the top and the bottom pins connect together so we might as well start with the LED first so we're going to connect a resistor to the anode, the long lead here, and put it to the positive rail. So the short lead, the cathode, we're going to put to where this pin is here. And we could also build it over here. Doesn't matter. And uh, we got that there. I'm going to turn the power on. You can see that LED is on. And now the resistor I'm going to put to the positive rail. Both of these resistors and put it to the long lead, the anode of that LED. Both of these resistors are 1 kilo ohm resistors. Since it's a 5 volt power supply, we could use 220 ohms. That's plenty safe or higher. So you could even go a little bit lower, uh, but uh, 220 ohms is nice. Or you can go higher, just the LEDs won't be as bright. So, in any case, now you can see that the LED is still on. We are done wiring this. The base of this transistor is not getting a signal. We could also think of it as zero volts in this particular circuit. And so the transistor or the resistor here is to the positive rail and to the LED set to conduct, but it comes to this bottom part of the switch and it ends its journey there. So there's no voltage to the base of the transistor. Now I'm going to press the switch and you can see that now our input is the switch going to the base. So we consider the base the input in this circuit. 
So it's got zero volts. Now it's got five volts to it. Actually, we got a little voltage drop from the LED. Instead of five volts, let's just say high or low. So it's about zero now. And if I press the switch, then we get enough voltage. We'll call it a high signal where the transistor starts conducting. Starts conducting from base to emitter, turns the transistor on. And so the transistor's off right now. That's why the LED is lit up. It is wired to light up. It's as if the transistor and the switch LED and resistor, this LED resistor, don't exist. When we press the switch, now the transistor is conducting freely. So whatever current gets through that resistor, it has a much easier time going through the transistor. It's almost as if it had zero ohms of resistance. It's actually pretty close and uh, it's saturated those are all uh, things if you don't understand what that is uh, study NPN bipolar junction transistors more but uh, in any case you can see that when the input is low right now so we don't have any voltage then the output is high there's the uh, full voltage across the LED when we press the switch now there's zero volts for the output, the LED on top here. Whereas the input, you can see we have a high signal to the transistor. We have a positive voltage enough to turn it on. So those voltages often are five volts and zero volts. And there's also a range where you consider a certain voltage high and a certain voltage low. So that's topics for pickier uh, not gates. So this is just a basic one with the transistor. It's uh, pretty simple and I think it's interesting. You learn a bit about electronics because a lot of times, especially with transistors, it's not the power that they're providing to the load. A lot of times it's the power they're taking away from the load. And this one's pretty straightforward. We go from the transistor not conducting at all to it being saturated, it conducting fully, which is the simplest way to use a transistor as a switch. But when we turn the transistor on, it actually turns the load off. And when the transistor is off, then the load is on. So that's why it's a not gate, basically, a logic gate. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hope that all made sense. And uh, I will see you in the next video.